Hello everybody. Good afternoon to you from Glastonbury. Uh, I'm just going to wait for some people to come in as always and then I will get started. Hello Cricket, how are you? How are you today? Michael. Oh, so lovely to have you here, Michael. Oh my gosh, Pamela's in the house. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world, uh, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, I just wish you peace, harmony, and send you love. Just love. I just feel it's time to put some data behind the word love so that the people that are awakened, the people that are unawakened can perhaps see it from another perspective which will help them to evolve, to raise their frequency on their path. Because within the spiritual community, um, there's, there's a lot of talk of love and a lot of talk of light. And then also residing within the world is, is the analytical mind, the brain. And there can be a resistance to love a resistance to light from an analytical mind. Also a resistance due to uh, turmoil, torture, past lives, where there has been, even in this lifetime, so many experiences of lack of love that we can actually turn the other way. And, and go the other way. So what I really want to do today is, is explain what love actually is in a data form. Anyone that's followed me for a long time knows that I only do the assistance on Facebook because of my heart, because I love. Um, so most of you know that I come from love, but there's also an understanding that I don't really explain. I just give it out, but I don't explain the data of what love truly is. And because of where we as a mass collective are now and where we ascending are headed, it really does feel time to take the lid off love and explain what it actually is in a data form. And this might just allow people that are fighting it, fighting the love of others, fighting the love for themselves, fighting the idea to actually be love. It might actually help them. So that's what this is about. If we take love as a word, it's the very word that can lead human beings to a distortion of what love actually is. So love is energy. It's an energetic frequency. So just as we experience feelings, emotions such as um, happiness, joy, um, loneliness, pain, sadness, anger. Those are all energetic, energetics of different frequencies. Love is also an energy of a specific frequency. If we take 
um, and we'll go up through dimensions just to explain how love is experienced and how it evolves, how it becomes more and more and more subtle as we go higher and higher in our internal energetic frequency. So if, just get a blade of grass, if we take this as, as showing frequency that's rising, okay, showing frequency that's rising, we can experience love here in the third dimension at that frequency of consciousness that we are. And we can easily say that we have been in love. I can say that, that we've been in love with somebody and we have felt such a love for that person and yet we're unawakened and our consciousness is there. Okay. That is a specific frequency plane, a consciousness plane that our consciousness can experience. There, right there, third dimension. So we can experience love, yes, absolutely. But as we ascend, we understand love to greater and greater and greater and greater degrees until we embody love and then until we connect to the source of all love, which is God, source, and then we get to create with that love. So I'm going to explain that. In a third dimensional consciousness, we can experience unconditional love as well as conditional love. So conditional love would be that I love a person if they give me this. Or I love a person if they act a certain way towards me. If that person fulfills my needs, and I stress the word need as a need within my unawakened humanness, if that person fulfills the needs that I have, and those needs are things that I am not giving to myself, therefore I look outside of myself for somebody to satisfy those needs. If that person satisfies my needs, then I will love them. And if the person doesn't satisfy my needs, then I will choose not to love them. And so that is, is, an, is a conditional love. I'm trying to explain the different types of love. That's a conditional love. It's love with conditions that I will give you love if you give me this, if you give me that, because all of this and that I am not in that moment giving to myself. Or let's take it in a simpler form. I will give you love if you go out to work and provide the financial income for me to live comfortably. I will give you love. It's, un it's conditional love. So then in that same third dimension, we can experience unconditional love. Yeah, absolutely. We may not be able to define it that way because of our consciousness, but we can experience unconditional love. So for those of you that are mothers, when you first see your baby born, you require nothing of that baby, nothing. You just want to love it and care for it, nurture it. You want to keep it safe. But there's nothing that you're asking of that baby. You just have unconditional love. And if you're not a mother, I'm not a mother, you could experience that unconditional love with an animal. I, uh, many years ago, I, I took in an orphan duck, Indian runner duck that had a bad leg and nobody wanted it. It was all on its own. And I, I just knew I had to give it love, that it had to have love. So I took it into my house at the time and reared it in my bedroom and I just gave it love. That's all I wanted to do was allow it to feel loved because it wasn't. And it was through that duck that I first saw with my eyes my Merkaba outside of me spinning. Ah, 
I had no conditions. I just loved that duck. I wanted it to feel loved. And so I sat with it in my arms as it was a baby, just loving it. And the feeling of love within me, that was the unconditional love that somehow ignited the, the sight of, of my Merkaba for the first time. So that's unconditional love. It's where we give love, not requiring anything back for ourselves. So love, whether it's conditioned or unconditioned, it is a feeling within us. It's an energy within our body that we feel. So if you think now of somebody that you love in your life, family, partner, animal, baby, if you just ignore the word and just feel the love that you hold within you for that person or being, there's a feeling there and that feeling is an energy. So going back to unconditional love on the ascension, if that's the third dimension there and we can experience unconditional love and conditioned love, on our ascending path we learn about unconditional love. And by learning about it within ourselves, we start to see in the outside, in our dream, conditioned love. We start to be the witness of people giving us or giving others love with conditions. And that's how we learn the difference between conditional love and unconditional love. But it's still an energy. Conditional love if that is energetic frequency rising higher and higher in frequency as we ascend up higher and higher in our energetic state, a conditioned love has a frequency of, say, here, okay? Unconditional love, and this is just for the sake of explaining as an analogy, conditional love has a higher frequency of here. So it is love, it's just how much, to what degree do we experience this energy in terms of the frequency within our body. It's energy. How much of that frequency have we embodied? There's the conditional love and there's the unconditional love. And so we start on the ascending path to start to look at the lack of love that we're giving to ourselves. It's something we all have to do. And I'm aware that there may be people watching that still don't have love for themselves. And so again, that's a really, a why I also want to come on, is to really Try and be the catalyst to help you to start to have love for yourselves. Because until you love yourself fully, until you give all that love that you require from outside in your dream, until you are able to give all of that to yourself easily in any moment, you can't give out all love to others. And so anyone that's not feeling love for themselves, I can honestly say I didn't love myself. I was given an internal download years ago to love myself fully. And as soon as I heard that, I said to myself, well, that's never going to happen. <laughs> that's never going to happen. But I worked on it just a piece at a time, just a tiny piece at a time. It's not instant. But if you have the desire to be all love to all things, why would you not be love to yourself? Where does love come from? What is love? Love is God's energy. 
That's what it is. It's energy. We can call it love, but it's actually an energy of God that we receive and experience as consciousness in a microcosmic form. So an unawakened, feeling conditioned love for a person, they may well love that person with all their heart and all their might. But if it's conditioned love, it's an energy frequency that's here. It's God's energy experienced at this frequency. And then when we start to love ourselves, we end up being the love within for ourselves, that means if I felt lonely, I could love myself in that moment and not feel lonely. If I felt hurt by something that happened from the dream, I could go in and love the one that is hurt and no longer feel hurt because I am giving that love to myself. I'm not relying on the outside to give me that love in order to make me feel good. So you become self-sustaining. You become love. And then what happens is you have that love within you that you wish to then give out to all things. And you're giving that unconditional love out, not because you want something in return, not because you've had the mind thought of, oh, if I give love, I might get that back. No, 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 no. You just give love because you are it, because you're full of it, because if you don't, you'll burst. It's an energy that you're giving out, though. It's energy, which is why so some of us can activate another person. How do we activate another person? We activate through our hearts by being love in that moment, not through the mind, not through a conceived idea of, oh, if I do this, that person will be activated. It's not through the mind, it's through the heart. It's in the moment of now that we do it. It's when we allow that heart portal to expand and expand and expand. And then all we are doing is being almost like a conduit where the love of source comes through us, through our heart portal, out of our heart portal to the birds, to the person in need, to that animal, to your mother to the clouds, to the flowers. You become the conduit. It's a conduit. It, it's, like, it's like a conduit where you're so open in your heart that you can easily receive the love of source to give out. So you're not giving it out for reward. You're not giving it out for gain. You have zero expectations. You're just unconditional love because that's what you've become. And so I want to touch on um, more. There's a few more things to say, but I want to really try and nail something that I see, and I've seen it for years. I, I've seen it ever since I awoke. Uh, but let's really nail it. Let's really try and define it so that at least we can be informed. At least we can make educated judgments, educated uh, analogies of, of what we're experiencing in our own dream. And that is, I hear again and again and again that love, is, love and light is, is fluffy. You know, it's that fluffy stuff. Um, I just, because of the data I have, because of what I've always known, I can always only say love is energy and light is 
energy. So what do people mean by love and light is fluffy? I'd like to suggest, and it's just my suggestion, that maybe it would be good to think about what do I mean by fluffy? Do I mean pretense? Pretending to be love to a person, pretending to be light to a person, but just that pretense. Is that what the fluffiness is about? Maybe. And to that I would say that that pretense has been around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So how much attention should we place with that pretense based on where we are in the galactic timeline of this mass collective ascension? Because many, many years ago, it was very easy for people to act, pretend they were love, pretend they were light, but we're not there now. This is what everybody can see this. We're not there now. You can see easily if a person is coming from love and they are that love or whether they are just pretending to be that love. Pretending to be the fluffiness. Are they the light or are they pretending to be the light? Is that the fluffiness everybody talks about? Because in truth, love is energy. It's source energy. And what is light? Source energy. It's what we're made of. Every single thing, every single thing is made of light. This grass is made of light. This bottle of juice is made of light that we get to see with our physical eyes. Everything is made of light. We are made of light. So if light is fluffy, what are we denying except ourselves? We're made of light. We're made of it. And it's that light body that we are embodying more and more and more and more on our ascending path as we raise in frequency and frequency. We're embodying more light into this solid density. So it's far from fluffy. Now let's talk about love. How fluffy is love? It's energy. by being that unconditional love, by actually being it. So being it in all moments, when we're with people and when we're just on our own. It's what we're being is an energetic frequency when we are being unconditional love. And step by step on this ascension, as we, as we get to know unconditional love within ourselves, as we express it out to people and all things, we take more and more responsibility within ourselves. And what that journey does in parallel to feeling and being and realizing the unconditional love that we are, we embody more and more light. We embody more and more energy and we raise in our energetic frequency. So what that means if we look at this blade of grass again, is that we move up again to here. And because we've taken full responsibility for our energy, what that means is we can receive far greater degree of energy that we call love. It's energy that we call love, but we can receive into our bodies far, far more of that energy we call love. And for a few months now, we're experiencing that in our physical body as physical sensation. This is the energy that we call love. We get to work with the energy within our body that we physically feel. And where we're headed, already we're able to work with that energy. 
So if I just jump forward in our timeline, our collective timeline, just for a moment, I'm going to jump forward. Let's say source is here. Let's say unmanifested forms are here, okay? Because of the love, that energy frequency heightened that we experience within our body, that we recognize and work with within our own physical vessel, we are able, through our integrity and responsibility, to work with unmanifested form, which is pure white light, and bring that white unmanifested form that is light, bring it into, into, into the physical reality of 5D. So we become the alchemists. We manifest for all. So love is far from weak. It's far from fluffy. It's an energy. It's so easy to not be love. It's so easy to uh, throw the toys out of the pram and decide, well, I love this person, but I won't love that person. But how much strength does it require of a human being to love all people regardless of what they do in the world? That's not weak. That's power. That is absolute power to love all things and all people regardless. It's an inner strength. It's also in alignment with the creator of all those things. Because every single thing that is made of light has been born of God, of the creator. So I guess I'm trying to explain that If we can't embrace love as this beautiful, beautiful feeling within us that we feel, which it is, that only increases and increases and increases in its internal feeling to the point that you feel it physically. It's not just an energetic or a feeling of, oh, I love that flower, I love that person. No, it becomes physical energy coursing through your body. And then from that, sustaining that, being that as your way of being through your choice, through my choice, we become more and more aligned to creator and we can easily say that through history and uh, even within these times there are beings uh, on the planet that have tried to um, distort and abuse that energy that we feel within our bodies but I just want to remind everybody with that is that, um, let me just get some more grass. The ones that do distort that energy, the ones that do try to abuse the energy within the body, they can only stay at the third dimensional level or the fourth dimensional level. And they can only play in the astral planes. They can't go any further. They can't go into fifth and higher unless they too become that love frequency 
because there's no entry into fifth unless all of those distortions within the human being, those desires to overpower, those desires to control, those desires to abuse, etc., etc., unless those distortions are cleared within them. So those frequencies just remain within the third and the fourth dimension. They can't go to the fifth unless they clear themselves. So we can say that yes, there still is and there has been human beings on the planet that have tried to utilize those energies in a distorted way, in a way to keep the power from the people, in a way to uh, deny people their own innate power that is within them. But where we are now and what human beings are actually doing through their ascension and through their own internal work, because of the galactic timeline that we are in now, there is nothing that those energies can do to stop what has already started. Because there are people all over the world today that are working with the internal energies through the love that they are, through that unconditional love, through that service to the whole. It's already here. And so I'm wanting to explain today what love truly is. It's an energy. What light truly is. Light is unmanifested form. And the reason I'm really wanting to explain it now is because of the times ahead. The times that we are walking into together. We haven't been at this point before. It really is an alignment of the brain and the heart. If the brain wishes to know more, go into the heart and the heart will show the brain. Go within. But where we are headed and it's already happening is that the human beings on the planet will start to work with sacred energy and they will work on their own with sacred energy which is alignment to God they'll work with one other person with sacred energy and they'll work in groups with sacred energy And the only way to work with the sacred energy in order to draw down from the unmanifested light state and manifest on the planet, the only way for that to be so and to actually happen is through the frequency of love. It's not through the mind. It's through the heart, it's through love. And then the mind understands the heart and then the mind works with the heart. So it becomes a divine alchemy, a unified divine alchemy, where the energy that we work with is God's energy on this physical plane, on this planet. And we've never been here before, but it's already started. It's happening behind the scenes. People are feeling it, I know full well. Uh, people are working with it already quietly. It's here. But it's only through love. It's only through, you know, really understanding what love is and then making a choice. And if that choice is to, to, to disregard love, then, you know, that's a choice as well. I'm not here to to try and change anyone's mind, but at least if you're informed about what love actually is, 
that it is an energy. That's what it is. Then at least you can make an informed choice for yourselves. It's why it's such a beautiful sensation. Love within our bodies, within our feelings within our emotions. It's such a beautiful sensation. It's, it's the magnetism of source. It is source. Love is the energy of God. How much do we wish to experience that? And what do we wish to do with that? We create with it. That's what we do. We create with it together unified in awareness for the whole. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, because of what's unfolding, the times ahead for humanity. Hope that helps. Um, God bless you all. I hope your day goes well for you. Whatever you wish that to be. And I just send you so much love. Keep going. Just keep going. Because these are such magical times for everyone. We've not been at this point before. To find that strength within you each day. Acknowledge yourself, love yourself, all the power, all the energy is within you, it's within you, and it's through love, it's through that energy of love that we embody more and more and more, the light that we truly are that we've come here to be, that we've come to express, and that we've come to create with. I love you all so much. <laughs> I love you all so much. God bless. Take care of you. Bye for now. Bye-bye.